हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अवर वीडियो लेक्चर ऑफ सेकंड प्रैक्टिकल ऑफ कंप्यूटर एंड नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी सब्जेक्ट माई सेल्फ निकुल जयसवाल लेक्चरर इन कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग श्री के जी पॉलिटेक्निक भरूच सो प्रैक्टिकल नंबर टू इज कन्फिगरिंग अ सिस्टम फॉर वेरियस सिक्योरिटी एक्सपेरिमेंट्स सो वी नीड टू कन्फिगर अवर कंप्यूटर सिस्टम फॉर द वेरियस सिक्योरिटी रिलेटेड एक्सपेरिमेंट्स so in this practical we will do uh, certain things so first thing we will do is creating a user account with password so we will create a standard user in a windows operating system after that uh, after that we will see the access control for user how to uh, modify the access control for particular user for the particular file after that we will see windows defender updating so uh, Windows Defender is a uh, inbuilt antivirus software for the Windows so we will see how to update the Windows Defender after that we will do the firewall configuration we will see what is the meaning of firewall and how firewall will work and we will also configure the firewall for certain packets after that we will see the group policy editing in group policy editing first we will see the password policy so in this uh, we will set set a password policy uh, for standard user after that uh, we will configure the command prompts uh, such as it will not be accessible to standard user so prevent access to command prompt next we will see how to prevent access to control panel and after that uh, in the last stage we will see how to prevent a removable devices uh, from uh, using to a computer so let's start with our uh, first topic that is creating a user account with password so this is my windows 7 machine so let's start with creating a user account so first of all go to the control panel if you see uh, icons like this you can modify this icon by clicking on Uh, categories uh, view by categories or large icon click on large icon then go to the user accounts so you can see settings regarding the users now in my machine there is only one user and it is administrator user so let's try to create one another user so click on manage another account now here you can see create a new account so click on, on a create a new account then we will give a name user 1 now you need to make a choice between two categories standard user and administrator now if uh, uh, if your uh, your machine is in organization and multiple users are working on that machine then you must be create a user as a standard user so you can see standard account users can use most software and change system settings that do not affect other users so they can uh, change system set settings that are particularly made for their particular user so do not make user as a administrator so administrator will have a whole control of the system so whenever we create a user for uh, in a multi user system for a uh, organizations employee at that time we need to uh, create a user as a standard user and we will click create account so this account has been created now you can manage this account so by clicking on uh, that user you can uh, change the account name you can create a password you can change the picture then set up a parental uh, controls so uh, then you can also delete the account and you can also change the account type so we have made the account as a standard user by clicking this you can uh, uh, convert the standard user into the administrator so let's start with creating a password so we can click on create password uh, we can give a password you can also uh, uh, write the password in create password so this account has been created now how to log in in that account go to start menu then click here and log out or you can use switch user also 
if you use the logout you will be logged out from your particular administrative account and you will log in into another account so let's start with log off so I now we will log in into our newly created account So we have entered or logged in in a newly created account. So you can see here user one. Now if you go into the control panel from the user one and you go into the user account. In this uh, account, uh, if I want to change the account type, uh, let's try to change our account type. So it will ask for the administrative password. So user will not be allowed to change this type of information when the user is in as a, a login as a standard user. Now let's try to change the account. So it will also uh, ask for the password for the administrative account. This is the reason um, we create the account as a uh, standard account. So it will provide the better security against unauthorized uh, modification in our computer systems now let's again uh, we log off from this user account and we will log in into our so this is our admin account Now let's move forward to a second topic that is access control for user. Now let's start with our second configuration that, that is the access list. So Windows operating system uses the access control list to provide access to a particular files or folders based on the uh, configuration that has been made by the administrative so let's try to uh, configure the access control uh, for the particular folder now let's suppose so this is my e drive i am creating one folder in e drive and i will name it as a files now i am creating a file uh, in that folder now I don't want to allow any user to see these files or to open this folder. So this type of security we, uh, we can provide by using the access control list. So we can control the access to these files or folders by uh, using the inbuilt access control provided by the Windows operating system. So for that what we can do is click on the right, uh, right click on the folder, go to the properties now we will go into the security tab now security tab you can see the uh, access control list so i want to uh, deny all the permission for the user one to this folder so what i will do is i will go into the advanced now these are the uh, uh, different different users so administrator has full control system has full control for these files then authenticated user can modify the files and users that means the newly created user can read and execute so i want to change this read and execute permission i don't want uh, that another user can read or execute the files in this uh, folder so what i will do is i will click on change permission i will add the user so we will type a username user1 and we will check for the names Yes, so user one uh, account is created in this computer, and the name and uh, user one is uh, user of a computer. So I want to add this user. So I will add the user by adding it, and I will give the permissions. So what I am going to is, uh, what I am going to do is, I will deny all the uh, access and permission for this folder for user one. So after clicking on full control deny. I will click on OK. I will apply 
and uh, yes then okay okay and okay so now user one will not be allowed to open these files now let's check it is done or not so what we will do is we will uh, switch the user so we will uh, uh, log off from this administrative account and we will log in into a, our a newly created account now let's log in into user one So we are logged into a user1 account. Now we will go to computer, new drug and we will try to access this folder. So the error message will be print. You don't currently have permission to access this folder. Click continue to permanently get access to this folder. If I want to give a user to uh, permanently access then it will print, it will print continue. And the user, uh, the password for the administrative account will be asked so if user want to get access to this file the administrator need to give the password to give access to that uh, folder that we have created so this is how the access control in windows environment works now let's move forward to the third topic that is windows defender updating So Windows Defender is an antivirus software that has been provided by Microsoft itself. So all the antivirus software must be updated so it can catch all the viruses that has been developed in recent time. So we will in this uh, we will see how to update our Windows Defender antivirus software. So first go to a control panel. Now you can see Windows Defender here. Click on Windows Defender. So after that, uh, check for the updates. So it will check for the updates and if the updates are available. So my virtual machine is not connected to internet, but if the updates are available, then updates will be given here and you can update from here. Clear? So all the antivirus software that has been installed in your computer system all the antivirus software must be up to date so it can capture all the viruses that has been developed in recent time. Clear? Next topic is firewall configuration. In this we will see how to configure a firewall. To configure a firewall, first of all click on the control panel. Now you can see the windows firewall here now click on the windows firewall so by default the firewall is uh, is on so what is the firewall so the firewall uh, uh, will check all the packets that has been coming from internet to your system and that has been going from your system to a uh, internet so all the packets will be monitored by the firewall and if firewall detect any malicious activities through the internet it will block all the packets that are coming from the internet so you can see here windows firewall can help prevent hackers or malicious softwares from gaining access to your computers we will see uh, what is the firewall and how the firewall works in unit number four but if you want some more information uh, regarding firewall you can click here so how does a firewall helps protect my computer if you click here you can see the definition of the firewall. A firewall a firewall is a software or hardware that checks information coming from the internet or a network and then either blocks it or allows it to pass through to your computer. So it will check all the packets and all the information that has been coming from, uh, from the internet to your machine. And if a uh, firewall detects any malicious activity then then packet or the connection will be uh, <coughs> will be break by the firewall clear so you can turn or or turn off firewall from here so in the left side you have a button turn windows firewall on or off you can click here if you turn off your firewall then all the packets will be allowed and when you click on the turn off you can see here turn on fire windows firewall windows firewall is turned off click to turn it on so you can see here uh, uh, 
home or uh, private networks are not connected and public networks is connected so windows firewall must be on uh, to protect your uh, computer from uh, malicious attacks from the internet so we will put the turn on back windows firewall now if you want to uh, uh, by default uh, every major rules are set by the uh, uh, in the in windows firewall but you can also uh, uh, manually configure the windows firewall so to uh, manually configure uh, you can click on allow a program or feature through windows firewall clear uh, and you can allow the separate uh, 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 programs remote desktop you want to allow the remote desktop or not if you want to allow the remote desktop then uh, from which network you will allow you will allow the remote desktop from public network or private network so all type of uh, 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 packets or uh, features can be uh, added from the uh, manual con uh, manual configuration also then file and print sharing if you want to allow the file and print sh uh, sharing then you will click on file and print sharing then which network private network or public network if you if you click on public uh, private network uh, the file and printer sharing on the private network will be allowed if you unclick the public network then file and printer sharing on public network will not be allowed so this type of rule can also be set by manual configuration there are uh, uh, more many uh, services uh, like uh, remote service management then routing and remote access do you want to allow routing and remote access to your computer or not and if you want to allow then on which network you want to allow you want to allow on private network or you want to allow public network so this type of setting also can be done in uh, windows firewall you can also manually uh, 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 manually set the packets types uh, to allow or not to allow in your computer in advanced setting so you can see uh, by clicking on advanced setting you can see the inbound rule and outbound rules so inbound rule meaning of the inbound rule is when the packet is coming from internet that will be called as a inbound rule and outbound rules will be called as when the packet is going uh, out from your uh, machine so if you uh, set a rule for inbound rule you can click on right click and new rule then uh, you can allow a program uh, packet by program by port or predefined properties or custom so if i click on port and next so it will ask tcb or udp and uh, click by clicking tcb and udp you will define the which type of port you want to allow and specific local port let's suppose i click on 80 that is http if i don't want to allow the http to be contacted uh, to my machine i will click here 80 port number 80 then allow the x connection or block the connection if i click on block the connection and next and next and finish then uh, we need to give a name port 80 not allow so if i click on this then uh, any connection with the port number 80 will not be allowed from my computer so nobody can contact http server from my computer so this is how we can configure a firewall manually or automatically in windows environment Now next we will see group policy editing in, in this group policy editing first of all we will see password policy. So to open a group uh, policy editor uh, click on start type run then write gpedit.msc so you need to write gpedit.msc and click enter so it will open the local group policy editor you can see here local group policy editor uh, you can also search for the group policy editor so you can also write uh, group policy editor so edit group policy you can click here and it will also open the local group policy editor now let's start with uh, uh, setting of uh, password policy so to uh, 
to configure a password policy we will go to a computer configuration in con computer configuration we will click on windows set uh, windows setting now in the windows setting you can click on security setting now in the security setting you can see account policy so click on account policies so in the account policies we have uh, two categories first is password policy and second is account lockout policy so click on password policy so when you click password policy you can see various categories so uh, um, uh, enforce password history so it will enforce the password history that means how many password you can uh, remember then maximum password age so uh, by default the maximum password age is 42 days that means after 42 days the user need to reset a password or uh, uh, user need to give a another password change the password they must change the password so this is how you can uh, uh, provide the password policies in windows environment then minimum password age you can see minimum password age is zero then minimum password length you can define the characters of the password so if you put here 10 that means minimum 10 character uh, must be present as a password so less than 10 characters will not be allowed as a password so this is how you can uh, create a password policy then you can also see person me, uh, password must meet a certain uh, complexity requirement so if you enable the complexity requirement and if you apply then a complexity requirement will be enabled that means uh, uh, you can see here the complexity of the password so not contain the user account name then be at least six character in length then English uppercase must be there, English lowercase must be there, then 10 uh, base 10 digits must be there. So this is the uh, password complexity requirement. So you can enable or disable the password uh, complexity requirement from here also. So this is how you can implement a password policy in Windows environment. Now we will see how to prevent access to command prompt for a user in Windows. Command prompt can be used to uh, launch many type of malicious activity. So if you want, uh, if you want to disallow command prompt to certain users, you can provide it. So to uh, prevent the uh, access to command prompt, what we will do is we will go into the run. We will click a uh, gpedit.msc then we will uh, in the group policy editor what we will do is we will go into a windows setting uh, no not the windows setting we will go into the administrative templates then we will go into the system and you can see here in the system here it is written prevent access to a command prompt so if you click on prevent access to a command prompt and if you enable it and apply and okay then the command prompt will not be accessible to another user so this is how you can provide uh, uh, provide uh, you will not allow the uh, access to a command prompt for certain users now next we will see how to prevent access to a control panel for user Now we will see how to prevent access to a control panel for the uh, user. So for that setting again we will open a group editor. In the group editor uh, you can see here user configuration. In the user conf configuration uh, we will click on administrative templates. Now in the administrative template you can see here control panel. Click on control panel. Now click on prohibit access to a control panel. So if you enable this then another user standard user will not be allowed to access to a control panel you can apply and okay this is how you can prevent access to a control panel to a users now at last we will see how to prevent a removable devices from using uh, in a computer So by using removable devices, the uh, uh, user of the organization can uh, uh, install malicious software to, to the business computers. 
so most of the organization do not allow access to removable devices to their business machines so we normally use two types of removable devices first is usb flash drives and second is cd or dvd so we can prevent the access to the cd dvd or usb pen drives uh, 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 to the computers through group policy editing so what we will do is we will open the group policy editor now in this editor uh, we will click on administrative templates now in administrative temp in the computer configuration administrative template you can click on system now in the system you can find uh, removable storage access when you click on removable storage access certain uh, policies will be shown here so first is uh, a CD and DVD so if you want to deny execute the CD and DVD you can disable here if you deny CD and DVD read access then you can write access then you can disable here if you deny if you want to deny read access you can disable it from here now if you want to uh, deny floppy drives you can uh, uh, disable from here and if you want to removable disk then you can uh, disable from here and if you want to uh, deny uh, all the removable uh, devices then all removable storage classes deny all access so you can enable from here so if you enable all removable storage classes then all the removable devices will not be accessible to the user so this is how you can prevent the access to uh, removable devices So this was all about our practical number two. I hope uh, you did understand all the topics and terms that we have discussed in this video lecture. Thank you so much.